Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you are preparing for engineering license exam, then you have come to the right place. I am Jitendra Kumar Sa and I'll be your guide on this exciting journey. I have been working as an engineer and I am passionate about helping others succeed. That's why I created this channel to give you the tools, strategies and knowledge you need to do well on your engineering license exams. Here you will find a lot of helpful videos made just for you. I will explain difficult concepts, show you how to solve problems step by step and give you tips and tricks for studying and preparing for your exams. And today in this video, we will discuss about the superposition theorems and in this video, we will see few numericals and few MCQ that can be asked in the engineering license exams. So first, let's see superposition theorems. So here, the superposition theorem is a circuit analysis theorem that is used to solve the network where two or more sources are present and connected. So the sources may be voltage source or current source. And this theorem states that in any linear and bilateral network or circuit having multiple independent sources, the response of an element will be equal to the algebraic sum of the responses of that element by considering one source at a time. So in the supervision theorems, there can be a voltage source or current source and while calculating current or voltage, we have to consider one source at a time. So here, here are the steps for solving network using the supervision theorems. So the very first step is take only one independent sources of voltage or current and deactivate the other sources. And in step two, if there is a voltage source, then short circuit it. And if there is a current source, then just open circuit it. In step three, by activating one source and deactivating the other source, find the current in each branch of the network. In step 4, to determine the net branch current, utilizing the superposition theorems, here the current obtained from each individual source for each branch. And in step 5, if the current obtained by each branch is in the same direction, then add them and if it is in the opposite direction, then subtract them to obtain the net current in each branch. So these are the 5 steps for solving network using supervision theorems. Now, there are few limitations of supervision theorems. The very first limitation is that this theorem does not apply to non-linear circuit. Second one, this theorem is not applicable to determining power. And the third one is the application of the supervision theorem requires more than one sources in the circuit. Now here is the MCQ. To apply the supervision theorem, all components must be the active type, both linear and bilateral, grounded, both non-linear and unidirectional. So here the correct option is both linear and bilateral. So in order to apply the supervision theorem, all the components must be both linear and bilateral. Bilateral. So if you don't know the meaning of linear and bilateral, you can watch my previous video. Now, superposition theorem is applicable for the calculation of option 1 is voltage and current but not power, option 2 both voltage and power, option 3 both current and power, option 4 voltage current and power. So here the correct option is option first, voltage current but not power. Now calculate current I in the following circuit using superposition theorem. So here we have to calculate the current following through this branch. So first we will consider one source. So here we can see here is one voltage source, here is another voltage source and here is current source. Altogether there are three sources. So first we will consider this 8 volt, so 8 volt source at a time. Sir. So if you consider this 8 volt source, this 2 ampere current source will be open circuited, this will be short circuited and we'll have this 6 ohm resistor, 2 ohm resistors and this 8 ohm resistors. So here an 8 volt source are considered, then here one 8 volt source is considered. Then if you calculate current I, then it will be 8 upon, we can see 6, 2 and 8 are in series. So current I will be 8 upon the sum of these resistors. So 8 upon 16 is going to give 0 0.5 ampere. Now in case 2, so in case if you consider this 2 ampere current source, then this, this voltage source and this voltage source will be 
short circuited. Now here, this 2 ampere current source is considered, and this 6 ohm, and if you consider this current falling through this branch is I, and this is 2 ampere, then obviously the current falling through this branch will be I minus 2, and this is 8 ohm resistor. Now applying KVL in the loop, if you apply KVL in this loop, then it will be 6i plus 2 into i minus 2 plus 8i is equals to 0 and the value of i will be 0 0.25 ampere. Now in case 3, now in case 3 we will consider this voltage source and this will be open circuited and this will be short circuited. So we can see here the current following through this branch is in this way towards the voltage source. So current I will be, since the current falling through this towards the voltage source, so it will be minus 6 upon the sum of this 6, 2 and 8. So minus 6 upon 16 is going to be minus 0 0.375 ampere. Now using supervision theorem, so total current will be the sum of all. Here we have obtained the current at 0 0.5 ampere, here at 0 0.25 ampere and now minus 0 0.375 ampere. Now we'll add these all. So after adding we will get here 0 0.375 ampere. So the total current will be 375 milli ampere. So here the correct option is first 375 milli ampere. Now here we have the next numerical. Using the superposition theorem find Vx in the following circuit. We have to calculate the value of this Vx. And here this, this is independent voltage source this is independent current source and this square box represents the dependent voltage source or current source. Now using supervision theorem when 20 volt source is acting alone if you consider one 20 volt this 20 volt source now this will be open circuited. So the circuit looks like this. Now applying KCL we can write here Vx here you can see this current is in this way so this will be outgoing and this will be also outgoing. So Vx minus 20 upon 20 plus Vx upon 4 and that is equals to 0 0.1 Vx. So if you calculate this, we will get the value of Vx as 5 volt. Now when 4 ampere source is acting alone, this 4 ampere source is only acting alone, then if you consider this 4 ampere current source, now this will be short circuited. So if you apply KCL, we can write here 0 0.1 Vx, here this is incoming, this is also incoming and we will consider this as outgoing and this as outgoing. So it will be, so it will be 0 0.1 Vx plus 4 and that is equals to Vx upon 4 for this and plus Vx upon 20 for this. Now the value of Vx will be 20 volt. Now the total response when both sources acting is the sum of responses when individual sources acting alone. So the Vx will be Vx1 plus Vx2. So here we have obtained 5 volt and here 20 volt. So the total sum will be 25 volt. So the value of Vx is 25 volt. Now which of the following theorem works only for the circuit that are reducible to series parallel combination for each of the power sources at a time and it only works where the underlying equations are linear, no mathematical powers are rooted. So obviously the correct option is superposition theorem. So this was all for today. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thanks for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.